So while it's raining outside, I, I think I figured I might as well take this time to start disassembling the power center. This is a Magnatech Power Plus. Original equipment with the camper. Um, don't know a whole lot about it other than it will keep your battery charged while it's plugged in, while the camper's plugged into AC power, and it'll charge going down the road. Um, and there's also your AC um, for anything that runs off of AC. You've got a few circuits here. This is your DC side. Somebody had added one for 10 amp LP. I'm not sure what LP is. Uh, and then USB, which is right here. Uh, I know that works. We did use that. But this one I'll have to think about. I'm not sure what that would go to. LP. Well, I'll figure that out and I'll uh, report back. At any rate, um, so my plan now is to start taking this out. I've got my new one right here. And I've just measured the opening. Looks like a perfect fit. They designed it exactly for this replacement. So it uh, doesn't look too bad. I've done some electrical before, so I'm not too uh, worried about getting it done. I got. I do have some instructions that came with it, uh, but not real. Uh, they're really step-by-step uh, -step type of thing, I guess you'd say. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do like I always do and just start taking it apart and see what happens. What could possibly go wrong? That's a heavy unit right there. A big magnet in there. Piece of metal. Yep. All right. Next. Uh, a little bit of a mess under there. I'll go grab the vacuum cleaner and clean that up before I put the new one in. And then figure out where all those wires go back into. That'll be fun. Somewhere on there. All right, so I removed the front cover over here on this, and this is what I thought I'm looking at in here. So where your breakers will go up here. Um, I got to put all my new lines through here on the side, and uh, new fuses for the DC side here. One thing I did notice is that. Um, this thing was not attached. You can see there's a tab bent right here. And it's supposed to look like this. And those screws are supposed to be here. You can see it's a little worn out to hold this uh, converter in here. But it was flopping around, which I thought, oh, no big deal. I can bend that tab back down, take those screws out, screw it in. But then once I got to taking it out further, it was actually a broken piece in here. It was kind of disappointing. Um, I see if I can do this with one hand here. I'll just go by a second. All right, so I went and pulled it out like this, and I happened to see a little piece of plastic. I pulled it out already. It was floating around. It's actually. Um, it looks like it's made to attach to here. Um, 
not a big deal. Um, I don't know if the company can replace it. I'm not sure. You can probably glue it back on there. But uh, I'm guessing it has something to do with holding the converter in there. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably just crazy glue it back on there. And um, it's not a big deal to put it in there. But for right now, I'll just leave that be. I'll let the company know I have a broken piece and maybe they can give me a new one. Or I'm not sure. I don't want to send this back. I don't want to get it put in. So I'll straighten this little tab out over here. And uh, so it looks more like that. And uh, we'll, we'll move forward. I'm not too concerned. I mean, I, I don't want it flopping around in there, moving around while I'm moving down the road. But... Um, I'll glue that broken piece back on and uh, I can come up with some uh, obviously there's gonna be a couple screws holding that down so I'm not overly concerned with it just a plastic case um, pretty flimsy but um, hopefully everything else is all right I see a couple bent tabs right here I don't know if you can see that or not there's no way you're getting all right so after uh, playing with this thing for a little while I think I got it figured out how I'm going to get this in there. I had to make a couple of modifications. I had four AC um, wires coming in, plus my main power source, which is right here. That's my main coming in from my uh, uh, outside connection, basically. So that's your input, and then from there, your distribution wires. I This box only has four. One, uh, only had four input holes. Um, I got plenty of breakers. I got my 30 amp main here, and then uh, I think that's a 20. I can see it correctly. And then uh, so let me see here. 30 amp is the green, 20, and then these are 15. So I'm gonna wire my positive from the outlet to my 30 amp and that will distribute my power to the rest of them and um, I had to since I already had four uh, outlet wires I wasn't able to run the power wire um, they have these holes over here but there's really no way to get the power wire from there over to the to here. So what I ended up doing is drilling another hole right here. And I'll run my main power in over here so it's closest to this breaker. But I'll end up having to run one of my other um, regular wires through this hole here, which is fine. I also had to make a small hole up in the corner here for my ground wire coming in from the chassis. Um, uh, that may actually have gone over here. I'm not sure. Maybe that's what that hole is for. I'll have to read the, the book again. Um, or at least look at the wiring diagram. Ground chassis, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I drilled this hole here. And then uh, that's it. I will have to, from here, I do have my green positive chassis wire. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to connect that. I think that goes over here in this block. I have to look at my wiring diagram again. So, um, I think that's it. I'm going to go ahead and start wiring it up. I got it cleaned out back here and uh, get this put in. All right, next day. So, yesterday I started working on installing new power center. That's the old one right there. Now, I could have just changed out the converter, um, probably would have been just the perfect upgrade, but Surprisingly, just the converter alone was um, almost as much as it was for this uh, Power Max. Um, and this is the PPC 3055LK. So, as I was saying, I was installing this. I started installing this yesterday, and this is the uh, PPC 3530Amp. Um, they make them up to 55, I believe, maybe even bigger than that. And um, so I had this pretty much all installed, all wired, everything was pretty much ready to go. But 
it was getting late at night. It was closing in on eight, nine o'clock at night and it was getting dark. I couldn't see. And I ended up just walking away from it, figuring I'd get some sleep and come back and look at it today. I did come back this morning and I ended up ripping it out, trying to figure out what may have been the issue with uh, it not working. I think I pretty simple and it was uh, one of those where it had been a long day and if I had just left it alone I probably would have uh, figured it out but um, what ended up happening I believe is that I didn't have my this is the ground for your chassis ground uh, for the all the DC and this is where your battery uh, well the battery power comes in on on this wire over here um, but your negative um, wire the ground is uh, wired directly to the battery and the only way this circuit here is going to get any ground is if you run a wire from here back to the battery and I've already verified that this morning um, I figured it was kind of a yesterday when I was working on it, I was just kind of trying to knock it out real quick and wasn't real happy with the way the wiring was coming out anyway and I didn't really have a chance to identify what all the wires were individually uh, for example like the ones I have connected up here right now are for the lights, some of the lights, and the other ones for the other lights. And I know um, some of the other ones are going to be for the water pump power and um, various other, you know, things around the camper that need that use power. So what I'm doing now is I'm just identifying what's what in terms of which wires are which. I'm going to label them so that I know in the future. But for example, I've already got these two wires hooked up. These are my uh, lights for inside the camper here. These lights right here and the fan light on here and under here. So, and believe it or not, they're actually on two, two se separate circuits. I believe that's because one of them is going to be for powering AC and DC and the other one's strictly DC. Um, I'm not sure about that, but at any rate, um, that's where I'm at now. Um, I think I've got a good handle on exactly how this is gonna work. We're gonna find out real quick. Um, I did have to make some modifications to the box. It wasn't a direct fit for this one here. Um, this one has uh, three breakers, which is fine. I only need three anyway. Um, but it didn't have a place for the that I could see for the power wire to come in the main AC power wire there's only four there was only four openings over here and I punched out those knockouts but I have four circuits so those four circuits fill those four holes and that leaves me no place to put the AC power cord in here so I ended up drilling another hole and actually I think what I ended up doing is running the AC power up through here and then running another power uh, line out of this hole over here and then I also needed a, a hole for attaching the DC ground to over here I'm not sure how they wanted me to do that there's no really the instructions don't really tell you anything about how to wire um, this is pretty much it tells you what the unit is and um, I'm assuming part of that is they don't want liability if you wire something wrong or get injured. You know, if you don't feel comfortable playing with this stuff, you should probably have a licensed electrician or a shop do it. Um, I do have some knowledge and background in electrical, and I, uh, I'm not at all leery about tackling this project in terms of putting it in and modifying what I need to, to get it to work. So that's what I'm doing. Um, this is not necessarily a DIY. This is pretty much how I did it. And as I said, I had to modify the box a little bit, but I think I've got it all figured out and I verified that it does work um, this morning. And now I'm going to go about uh, identifying the rest of the wires so I know what's what. I'm going to tag everything. So these two, for example, as I said, are for the lights um, and so on and so forth. So actually, these are for the lights right here and these are the ground wires for the those lights the other half of the circuit um, and yeah so that's basically what I'm gonna I'm gonna do now is just identify the rest of these I've also identified the power lines um, I noted that these two here were actually grounded to the chassis 
where these two up here were not. And I believe that may be uh, something to do with the um, GFI uh, outlet. I'm not sure about that, but this wire here does come back to, I think this one here comes back to the GFI and then goes in series. There's another GFI over here. Um, and I'm not sure what else. I know one of these down here is for the refrigerator. And obviously the refrigerator um, does require DC current uh, when this refrigerator does because it's a three-way AC DC propane. And um, so I know that that would make sense that that one would have a, a ground attachment. I believe this one here is for the lights, AC DC lights, which is uh, what I was saying as far as the other half of what one of these is the uh, ceiling lights in, in the camper. Um, I believe it's this one up here and this one over here that actually um, were strictly DC and then the rest of them I believe were a combination of both if I'm not mistaken but we're gonna, we're gonna verify that as I get along with the wiring here. So um, I've been looking around for any kind of instructions on the internet as far as wiring diagrams. I have not had any luck. Um, if anybody has any or knows of any, uh, by the time this video is put out, it'll, it'll be I'll be done with it, I'm sure. But it'd be interesting to see if there was anything. I, I'd, I'd copy anything that I could find just to have it for my records. But in the event that uh, there isn't, this is, uh, as I said, there's not a whole lot of videos of people using this um, PowerMax PPC 30 amp uh, to replace the unit that was in here, which is the, um, that's the Magnatech uh, 6300 series. I think it's the 3238 model, something like that. And again, you could, you, you, it was recommended that all I really needed to do to replace was this converter down here. And that was probably the easiest way to go, to be honest with you. There's, it's the only thing you really need to upgrade. The rest of this DC stuff is, and the AC stuff is probably fine unless you're looking to expand or, but I, these are, the reason I like this is because it's, it cleans up all the power uh, on the DC side um, and it eliminates any noise on the, on the circuit. And also it's protected or protected, but it, there's a little light that comes on, lets you know when there's short circuit. So it's easy to identify which circuit is bad. So there's, there's definitely some advantages. I'll put some more information to it. Uh, if I think of it down in the description or a link to what I found on this unit, but uh, I wanted to make the upgrade. The price difference was actually, I think the converter was actually a little more, about the same price as the whole unit. And this way here, I get to clean up all the DC stuff. Although I'm thinking probably if I just replace the converter in here, that probably maybe it does the same thing. I'm not sure about that. But um, at any rate, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, running, tracing these wires out, marking them. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, start getting this put back in. And uh, hopefully we'll get it figured out by the end of today. All right, so I've got a temporary battery just hooked up in here. It's it's obviously just something to help me identify which which uh, wires I'm going to use. These aren't going to be permanent. These are just jumper wires I'm using to get me to the power center here so that I can um, just basically identify which wires are which. So first one I picked. Now, I just want to make, before I tell you what I did here, there's, there's a little chart on the back of this power center right here, and it basically tells you which wire colors um, go where and what they what they're for so for example you can see the white wire here that's for your negative to the battery red wire positive to the battery now those are easy to identify because they're the biggest and the heaviest right here um, I don't have my negative hooked up but I do have my negative to the power um, right here to the chassis ground uh, bar and that's because this is primarily used for charging um, for the conversion part of it. It's not uh, anything to do with the power of the uh, individual appliances and parts. So um, they give you some, these are really, there's, there's a lot of them. Um, you can see if you look at this closely here, I'm trying to do this upside down. Uh, sorry about that. All right, so if you can see looking at this, um, 
you got basically different gauge wires. So the eight gauge over here are the heaviest. Those are the battery ones. And then you've got uh, three 10 gauge and then the rest are 12 gauge. And so you got quite a bit. There's quite a few. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight twelves, three tens, and of the, obviously the battery ones. But so you basically have three tens and, and eight twelves. It's quite a bit, and you can see. Uh, let me turn this around. So that's the the fuse block here, and basically these are the two wires that go to your converter down here, and uh, it came with these two fuses. Uh, right in here, there was one in here and one in here, and these are, I believe, according to the paperwork, are for in case you uh, hook something up backwards. These are safety fuses to save the uh, inver the converter and and the panel wiring, basically. Um, I just have those out right now, but I've already verified with my meter that uh, these are the power in. This is the power in right here, positive. And these two terminals right here are positive. This is the negative right here. So anything over on this side, this is the positive bar. These are all positive right here. And these are all the negative, well, not negative, but the power flows from there over this side here. And the same with this one flows from um, this side here to, I apologize, I'm doing this upside down here backwards. Uh, flows from this side here over to this side. So this is a positive bar basically. This is the negative uh, Right here. That's that this, this piece right here is the negative There's your positive And this is positive and all these are positive Meaning I just put my meter on them and verify that when I hooked up my positive um, Power is flowing to this side of the fuse on in this bar right here so from here I was able to identify um, I know that these two top ones here are the um, two on the bottom, the two twelves, which are right here. Uh, right here, these two over here. So I got the blue yellow wire and the orange gray wire. Those are 12, uh, 12 gauge wire. Let's see, what's it say here? And it just says, basically, it says uh, positive for DC adapter, uh, appliances, sorry. Again, I'm reading this upside down here. Um, so, so basically, your power will come in here on this red wire, come here, get distributed back out, turn this back around, come in through here, and then get distributed back out through the fuses, and then back out to these wires here. So the first thing I did is I... I picked one which was the blue and yellow right here and you can see I have it blue yellow right here 12 AWG and I verified that my power was flowing through I put the fuse in and then it came back out here on this blue yellow and then I supplied it to uh, one of my wires which I identified two of these wires in my circuitry and those are original from the factory for powering the lights. And I've already identified that. Let me show you what I did here. As I said, I have this one connected and I have power. So what I did from there is went up and tried the different lights. You can see this one didn't work. That one did not work. That one did work. That one worked, that's the fan for the oven. The fan actually works. I also identified, again, keep in mind, this is the DC circuit. The fan in the bathroom did not work, and that did not work. So basically, I'm just going around the camper and identifying that one works. Which lights will come on with just that one wire hooked up, and that one came on. So we know this one. This one, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so on that one circuit, we have five different, we'll call them as they do appliances, lights, fan, light. Um, 
So I'm going to identify that as ceiling light, and the easiest way to do it would be identify with the fan, uh, the oven stove light fan here, because the other circuit, which is identical, will run the other circuits that are not, and I'm going to show you that one right now. So basically, since I didn't get a wiring schematic with this camper when I bought it, obviously it's a 97, so you know I don't even know what came with it originally. Probably not much, if anything. I'm just going to make myself a little schematic so I know in the future if I have problems, this is going to kind of help me out, or whoever owns it after me if I end up selling it. But basically, these squares represent all the ceiling lights in the camper. This one here is the oven, ceiling light, and fan. This here is the bathroom, fan, and ceiling light. What I did is this one wire that I have hooked up now is powering anything I marked with a one. I'm calling this circuit one. I'm just making stuff up, but basically anything with a one is being powered by that circuit. So for example, there's, and this is strictly DC. There's no AC hooked up right now. So basically I have a light over the bed, which is that one right there. I have this one here. I have that one there in the fan i have that one there over the sink and i believe that's it so we have circuit one over the sink right here fan and light over the stove there's a light over the bed there's a light up here on the ceiling and there's another one here over me which is this one right here okay so that one works that one works that one works that works and that works the only three that are not working are that one that one and the one in the bathroom and these two under here okay okay so now i will mark that's i'm going to call that circuit one and i'm just going to this is this is the front of the camper here so i basically i'm sitting in the camper i'm sitting over here somewhere and the front of the camper is this way, the bed's up here, kitchen sink on this side over here. So, I'm just going to mark this as circuit one. I'll just put it up in the corner here. Don't circuit. Okay. And then circuit two will be the remaining ones, which will be this one here, this one here, bathroom light, bathroom fan, the light up here, and I believe that should be it. I'll verify those right now. Let me get that hooked up. Okay, so I've hooked up the second circuit, just temporarily again. I'm just touching the wires to verify everything's working before I connect it permanently. And I'll have the right connectors on here. Um, so right now I've got the second uh, circuit. I've already got it grounded to the um, block here. And which is obviously grounded to back to the battery. So there's my negative. And my positive is right here. And now I'm just going to verify which lights work on that circuit. Which would be circuit number two. There's one. There's two, there's three, of course those are already on. There's the bathroom fan, and there's the light. Now, those should be the remaining circuits on my little diagram here, should be Again, front of the camper up here. I've got these two here, which is that one there and that one there. I've got the bathroom fan I just showed you works in the light. And then I've also got an entrance light that works right here. So that's circuit two. All right. I'm going to turn these back off, save my battery. Okay. So that would be all of your ceiling lights and the fans and I believe that's pretty much it as far as power for those circuits obviously we still have 
some other circuits that need the water pump but we'll verify that one next probably and then this requires power for the igniter the furnace and then we'll deal with the fridge last I believe that's it so let me get this identify I'm going to mark these wires now and identify them so I don't lose them I got them disconnected and uh I think that'll work fine. Those are the two lightest gauge wires and it seem to be, which makes sense um, if you're camping and you've only got DC current, you're only going to have certain lights working. But if you're plugged in, the other lights I'm guessing are working. So for example, if I'm um, camping, the bathroom light and the bathroom fan, if it's DC, should be working. And then if you plug in the AC, um, the other lights should be working. All right, so I've got uh, I've got these marked. Now I knew this one was for this uh, this uh, USB charger right here. I've got that one marked. I'm going to set that one aside. I've also taped all my negatives together just to get them out of the way temporarily. I'm going to connect these up obviously to the block in here, but for now, I just want them out of my way. Uh, I've got my circuits marked, circuit one and two for the lights I just showed you. Now. It'd be nice if on this original panel they had told us what was what because I did, uh, you know, record, take video and pictures of this panel before I took it all apart. But unfortunately, it's not marked, so it really doesn't help me tell me what's what um, unless I went around and removed the fuse and then I would have been able to identify it, which probably would have been a good move. But um, regardless, uh, this way here, I'm, I'm figuring it out either way, so... Um, that's not always necessarily the best way to do it either, just to identify it. But I've only got, um, I've got four wires left, red, orange, blue, and black. Now I know um, the fridge has to run on these, well, let's see. The fridge requires... DC for the igniter on the LP. So the fridge requires DC power. And I know that because when we went camping, if the battery that was in here at the time, which was the one that had been here for since 2015, I think it just, it wasn't working, wouldn't take a charge, wouldn't hold a charge. So it wouldn't run the refrigerator um, the, it, on LP. So the gas, the refrigerator runs on LP, but it needs a power source to ignite the um, the LP. So without enough voltage, it won't work properly. So I know one of these wires is likely for the fridge. I'm guessing it's this red one. Um, but I'm going to identify that. Plus, we've also got the water pump here. So I'm going to identify what's what. Uh, and then we'll mark the next wire. I'll test it first. All right, so I pulled the switch out for the water pump. This is the on off switch for the water pump. And I see there's a purple and a blue. And I know the purple comes back to the water pump over here, which tells me obviously power has to go up to the, to the switch and then back to the pump. Um, so all I do to verify that's right is I have the switch on and I've got the blue wire right here. And all I'm gonna do is just to verify that is in fact the pump is I'm just gonna to touch it briefly and listen for the pump to run. I'll just listen real close. Oh, there it is. All right, after several, several hours of just going over everything, I I think I have everything ready to go back together now. Um, I'll just go over this quickly, what I, what I got here. And these were extra um, accessory wires. I've got four extra I can use down the road for more accessories or units. Uh, I've got everything marked for where it goes. So for example, uh, I've got the, oh, uh, I've got this goes to the trailer 12 volt positive, which I just verified. This is the other end of the trailer. I don't have the plug on there yet, but this 
black wire right here was the uh, 12 volts uh was the yeah this black wire on this end so that's your 12 volt supply to the trailer you got water pump you got refrigerator you got um this is a usb power source a uh, couple lights that uh, was ceiling lights and this is for the furnace so that's all of those wires um, we'll have each individual's uh, fuses and then these are all the grounds and I soldered the ends just to keep them clean because they have to go into you know these blocks here and I know from last night when I was doing it the wires kept fraying it just it was messy so I just soldered everything up on that end so those will all go through one of the holes in the back here and we'll feed those into the this block down here I also have my accessory wires ready to go. Um, those I'm gonna trim back and try to do as neat a job as I can once I get them in the box. I also have my ground cables ready to go. I soldered on some new ends. This one here is gonna go from the negative to the negative in the block here to ground that. And I've got my positive and battery uh, negative and positive cables right here. I put terminal ends on those So those will be then those are soldered also and those will be all nice and tight and clean uh, And I think that was just about it. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this back in now. I can uh, Think I'm gonna start on trying to figure out how am I gonna root or route my um, AC wires through the box here and I'll come back once I have all that figured out All right, got it all in, and not bad. So I'm no electrician, but uh, I'd say that's about as good as you can get. Pretty, pretty tight working area. You get your chassis ground in the back there. It's you got to do all those before you can do these up front. And uh, other than that, everything looks pretty good. Uh, I've got to put the fuses in. And I made myself a little, little diagram here of what's what, so I can fuse everything. I've already got the first two in there. So the next one will be the water pump fridge and the furnace. And I believe that'll be it. And then we can uh, plug in the battery and try out some, some of the DC circuit before I turn on the AC. Uh, everything back here. Came up pretty good. Um, oh, just snapped out there. Got all my uh, all my wires. Got them all marked and connected well. There's a battery box that goes in here, so nothing will be touching the battery once it's all done. And. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good. So now, a moment of truth. Let me hook up the positive and the negative. Right here, positive and negative. Then we have our ground here. And our ground here. Give this a shot here. Let's see what we do. Alright, 
So you can see we got a light on here. That means there's an open circuit. It means a fuse. This one. Okay, and that's for that's for this. Obviously, just went out. I'm gonna put the two main fuses in there. Or that came with it. And this is, I believe, again for reverse polarity if you do it backwards. Um, so I have, I have circuit one and two on. I have the AC, I have this on. So there's three more, the water pump, the fridge, and the furnace. Water pump is blue. Water pump is blue. Alright, I've got my fuses in there. Uh, yeah. Ceiling lights, fridge, stove, uh, fridge, furnace, water pump, and my accessory up here. So now we're gonna, moment of truth here, we're gonna try the DC. Hopefully it works. There's one. There's two. There's three. Fan. Good. This should not work, I don't believe. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Because, yeah, this is on circuit one because uh, when you're on DC, you would obviously have that working. There's the other one. Good. Yeah. All work. One more. All right. Looks like the AC fridge is powering on. AC, we're gonna put on mode, LP, DC, auto, AC. So we know that's working. That's the fridge. I believe the pump is listening for it. I'm gonna turn it on. Turn the pump on, pump's on. Pump will work. All right, so I just verified the pump uh, it does work. I had the uh, the wire come off, the blue wire come off down here uh, when I was moving them around. So reconnected that. That's working. So we know the fridge works. The water pump works. I haven't tried the furnace. I don't have the propane connected. Um, I'm assuming, and it's it's warm. I'm assuming it should be fine. I'll test it uh, once I get um, the propane hooked up. I'll verify that works. Next would be to verify the AC. Also, I want to check, make sure I should have 12 volts down to here. Positive. Um, so, check this real quick. My voltage for the trailer plug I gotta get that put back on and um, that'll be take care of that uh, yeah everything looks good I don't see any lights on I don't have any short circuits I don't have the power on yet but that would be the next step would be to plug in the AC and make sure I don't fry something there. All right, so I have my campers plugged in to my power back to the garage. So I have it plugged in. I'm pulling a 12.8485 volts DC out of the battery. And I'm about to turn on the main breaker. And the main breaker will be Get some light here. Uh, 
this 30 amp. Here we go. Power on. That should be the fridge. All the other accessories. Okay, everything's on. I'm going to verify the outlets are working. I believe it's supposed to be charging. I don't believe it is. Uh, yeah, I got uh, about 116 volts. My breaker and my uh, GFI outlet here. Seems a little low, but it could be something to do with the extension cord and the fact that that power is coming all the way from the trailer. But I'll try another one here. Sixteen. Oh, that's working. So, I believe that's it. Um, the only thing I question now is why it wouldn't be charging the battery. But uh, I can explore that another day. Voltage is dropping. Oh, there. Uh, it's definitely doesn't appear to be charging. So I'm not sure why that would be. Uh, I'll have to investigate that. Let's see why. I believe it's supposed to be charging more than that, but. At any rate, uh, got the main box in, got the wiring done. I'm real happy with the progress. And uh, it's going to be nice having this new updated power center in here. Assuming I can get the battery charging working, which I hopefully I can. But other than that, it came out pretty good. Pretty happy with it. And uh, other than that, I got a bunch of mess to clean up here. Um, I think we had a good day. And uh, I will report back on if what the charging how the charging system works on this I'll, I'll do a little more research tonight and try to get that figured out why it seems to me it should be it's plugged in and the converter is supposed to be creating uh, DC current to keep the char battery charged so we'll work on that another time or tomorrow. All right, I got my breakers off. Got my battery connected. My voltage is down to 1270, 12.77 DC volts on my battery. And I'm gonna flick the main breaker, breaker here and see if it starts charging. So the green is the 30 amp. Let's see what happens here. There it goes. It's charging. Battery charging. That's a beautiful thing. There's your battery charger. The breaker's on. Everything looks good. Let's try the power one more time here. Should be really bright. We have a winner. And this fan is all a little funky, but yeah. That fan will start speeding up once it gets going. It just uh, 
needs to be replaced, updated. But uh, all in all, fridge is working. Yep. On EC. And I know it is because if it wasn't, it'd throw a code. And I can maybe verify. Kind of hard to tell. It's only been on a couple minutes. I can't really hear if it's running, but I'm I'm fairly confident it's fine because I know from our camping trip, um, if it was uh, if it wouldn't work, it would be throwing a C code, and that would tell you that there's an issue. But apparently there isn't. I'm just going to turn this off for now. I don't need to have this on. I heard something go off there. So yeah, battery's charging. It was down to twelve seven seven. It's up to thirteen. I will shut this off for the night and. Uh, leave it plugged in and I'll come back and check it a little later um, and I'm gonna call it a day for now real happy with the progress got that done that power centers in and I took out this old one right here this is the uh, WS WSCO I believe it was working fine except I don't believe it was charging the battery that's that was the issue I think um, of course I didn't verify that I the battery was pretty old about I don't know, 10, 15 years old, I think. It was probably junk anyway. Um, that's just a battery I had here I bought for my winch. It's a deep cycle, pretty good sized battery. But um, it'll be fine for what I'm doing. I've got another one also. But yeah, pretty happy. So from there, um, I'm going to get everything cleaned up and just finish buttoning everything up. Uh, probably tomorrow. We got another project to start on. I uh, have to start making uh, some tie downs for brackets, I should say, tie down brackets for the camper uh, to go on the truck. And I purchased all the material for it. Well, I purchased some of the material I needed to build them. Uh, hopefully that'll come out. We'll start those tomorrow. And that'll be the last piece of getting this camper tied down to the truck. So, pretty happy with the progress today. And, uh, Hopefully this uh, will help somebody. If anybody has any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Again, this is the PowerMax PPC 30 amp. And I purchased this directly from the company. I'm not sponsored or anything from them. Just uh, letting, them, letting you know where I got it.